Hey guys, this is James from Master Organic Chemistry and uh, this video I brought some props to talk about turning things inside out and why it's uh, sometimes problematic for some of the molecules you're going to encounter. So um, here's just a simple elastic band I found. Um, so we can clearly turn this inside out, right? We've got lettering on the outside and we can just by deforming it a little bit we can go from it on the outside, the on inside and so forth. So it's pretty stretchy. Uh, here's a not very expensive watch that I have. So you can see the watch face on the outside, and similarly, it's pretty stretchy. We can turn it so that the watch is on the outside or the inside without too much trouble. Uh, here is um, an item belonging to a small member of my family. Uh, so we can, with actually quite a bit of work and deformation, uh, we can make it so that the groups that were on the outside are now on the inside and so forth. Uh, so we can make it uh, turn inside out as well. And we're going to take this analogy and turn it to molecules. Uh, so if you have a, a, a ring, a cyclic molecule, a cyclic alkane, for example, I've built this model of cyclonanane. And we're going to see how with cyclonanane, we can actually do the exact same thing, cyclonanane, that we did with these pretty stretchy household items. So we're going to take cyclonanane, see this white group here, these two white groups? These are going to be our points of reference. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this group here, and by rotating it through the middle of the ring, we can go make it from, remember how those white groups are both on the same side of the ring? Now they're on opposite sides of the ring. And we can actually continue this. We can rotate this sort of ad nauseum through the middle of the ring without too much difficulty. It's pretty easy to do. Cyclonanane is a pretty floppy molecule. But what happens when we start taking carbons out? So go from carbon um, chain with a ring with nine carbons to one with, let's say, eight. So here we've got cyclooctane. These two groups are still on the same side, or like we did before, we're going to turn this on the inside of the ring, and we can still do this actually. Um, this can still go from um, on the top to being on the bottom just by rotating through the middle of the ring without too much difficulty. Uh, cyclooctane is also not as easy as cyclonanane, but we still do it, so it's still fairly floppy. Now the problem comes once we start getting down below 8. And this is the vast majority of the molecules you're going to see in just sort of introductory organic chemistry is ring sizes of uh, less than less than eight, mostly six, right? So here we've got a seven-membered ring. These two white groups again are on the same side. Now, when I try and turn this white group so that it goes through the middle of the ring, I'm encountering a lot of resistance here, and that resistance is the fact that we've got a lot less uh, degrees of freedom here. Um, and what's going to happen is in order for us to be able to turn this on the middle of the ring, we're going to actually have some deformation. In fact, you can kind of see it happening here. See this, this bond <laughs> is getting uh, twisted from its ideal bond angle of 109 degrees. And in fact, we wouldn't be able to really turn it inside out without breaking our carbon-carbon bonds. And of course, in nature, that's not going to happen. That's not energetically favorable unless we were to heat the crap out of it. So um, but the, the upshot of this is we actually cannot turn this through the middle of this ring. So this is kind of locked in this position. And the same is actually true, you can imagine, even more so for a cyclohexane. So here's a six-membered ring, cyclohexane. I'm just going to move this around a little bit. And um, okay, so these two groups are on the same side of our ring. Now imagine that they were um, some group other than hydrogen, like chlorine or methyl or something like that. So again, if we try and turn this on the inside, there's just simply no way this, this can occur. These two groups are locked on the same face of this cyclohexane. And uh, like I said, imagine these are chlorines or methyls. If we were to take um, a molecule with the exact same components, so in other words, an isomer with the same molecular formula, except those two groups were arranged on opposite sides of the ring, like this, see how they're on opposite sides? They're on the same side. We cannot convert these two molecules into each other through bond rotation. Simply can't be done, of course, without breaking the molecule. That's not gonna happen. Um, so what that means is that these are actually isomers of each other. Um, they're a special type of isomer called a stereoisomer. That means that they have the same molecular formula, they just have different arrangement of their atoms in space. And we've got different terms. Um, so these white groups on the same side on the same side of the ring, we usually refer to that as the cis. Uh, when they're on opposite faces of the ring, we usually refer to that as the trans. So the cis and trans in this case are going to actually have 
different boiling points, different melting points, different solubilities, different physical properties, in other words. So there's no way of interconverting them. And this is something that you uh, is a very special property of these rings. Uh, the fact that you can't rotate them freely means that you're going to have um, consequences like this. You can imagine that this continues as we decrease our ring size down from 6 to 5 to 4. And here's sort of the most extreme example. This is cyclopropane. And actually, my model kit comes with these special gray uh, bonds so that actually just they're a little bit bendier than the, the normal ones so that um, you know, it actually allows you to make cyclopropanes in the first place without it breaking apart. So here, we've got the two white groups on the same face. And you can imagine there's simply just no way we could ever fit this group through the middle of the ring such that we could turn it into the trans version, okay? So really, what the bottom line is for this video is just that um, this is just one of the consequences of the fact that carbon has this bond, ideal bond angle of 109 degrees. Once your ring size gets small enough, so uh, lower than eight, so the vast majority of the rings you're ever gonna see, uh, we can't have free rotation in those rings. They're, we have what we call, they become conformationally locked. And so they're arranged in a certain way in the ring. And so one of the consequences of that is we can have these different isomers. So for example, cis and trans and so forth, kind of stuck there. So that's all I wanted to do. Just show the consequences of what happens when rings are locked in a certain position.